next step to that equation that we were talking about, and we can move into this now, is the idea that could that physics have physiological consequences in the human body at the level of the immune system, something we call inflammation, which is a strange term that we can talk about. Uh, and because we know that the body is electrical, you mentioned this, neurons move with charges. And let's yeah. talk about this next, because I saw this in your book and in one of the papers that I, I gathered from your book, that there, uh, like, there's some hypothesis that the chi, that meridians, the chi meridians from acupuncture could be conductive pathways in the human body. And that that certain parts of the human body are more conductive than others. Collagen, for instance, ground substance, this like, right? These, they have a, a negative charge, right? So there, are there yeah. these, from your research, is there evidence of actual electrical channels in the human body? Are we essentially wired beings? Yeah, absolutely. We, you know, I spent 25 years, uh, there's a whole story in how I got involved with this. I was the last guy that I would think ever would be involved with what we're talking about. But, but anyhow, uh, I understood grounding and I understood electrical. And one day I just asked a, you know, a, a question out of the blue. I said, I wonder if there's any consequence to us wearing these modern shoes, if there could be, uh, he'd be affecting us. And I didn't really know anything at that time. And, but I had retired when I was 50 years old. And I didn't have anything to do. So for 25 years or longer, 29 years now, I've been, you know, chasing this, um, this gorilla. But anyhow, um, <clears throat> let me try to say it is, so that people make sense of it. Um, everything in the body is electrical first. We are an electron unit. We are a carbon-based electron unit. Lots of conductivity in the body. The body gates electric, you know, uh, you know, channels. I mean, you know, electric, elect, uh, electrons don't flow freely in the body because, you know, you, you got to create ATP. You got to do all these things. You got to, you know, the body knows what it's doing and it took eons of time in order for it to evolve and develop a system that worked. And throughout all that time, it was always grounded to the earth. And that's why you had electrical stability. Now, only somebody with an electrical or bioelectromagnetic background really would make sense of some of this. But, but anyhow, every muscle, every single cell in your body is electrical. Um, so now, and they all operate with, they're all kind of like um, transceivers. They can transmit information like a radio station. They can receive information. They can receive it on nerves. They can receive it, you know, by, you know, energetics in the air, like radio waves and so on. Uh, the body is, every, is all of these things combined. Anything that's in our, in our environment, any knowledge of any kind, whether it's the fanciest computer or anything else, it all came out of us. That intelligence already is in us. That's how we slowly invent it and reinvent it and reinvent it and improve it. But anyhow, our body works. It's the, it's the most electrical device on the planet. Um, and, um, and, and, it's, and it's influenced by external electrical uh, influences. And so anyhow, but here's what re-grounding is all about. And it was an accident that I discovered this, and it was just a series of, of, uh, of events. And sometimes I, I think that I was just available. I had nothing to do with it, but something influenced me and kept pushing me and pushing me. And eventually I answered all these questions and brought the people, brought the, together the researchers, the, everybody it took in order to gather this information and simplify it and make sense of it because it's not believable in the beginning. How can I just take my shoes off put my feet on the earth and, and have inflammation disappear. And you can do it in five minutes. You know, this, you know. But anyhow, so it really, for years in the, in the beginning, I knew I could ground a person. I could take an electro EKG patch, put it in the palm of their hand, connect it to a ground cord, go stick it into an electrical ground. And five to 10 minutes later, any pain they may have, any flaring uh, arthritis or whatever, <clears throat> it will instantly stop the inflammation. We did not know the mechanism of action when I started this. I assumed it was related to EMS and all this crazy electrical charges in our environment. I later learned they have nothing to do with it. Um, it has everything to do with being connected to a reservoir of free electrons, which is the earth. The earth is the, is the most primal antioxidant because it's charged with electrons and it can receive electrons or, or give electrons. It's, 
It's kind of like uh, electrons can flow in and out of the body when you're connected to the earth as needed. Um, it's very challenging to measure some of those uh, because, uh, you know, a lot of this is at speed of light. You know? <laughs> and uh, so, so anyhow, as time went on, we kept searching and searching, trying to figure out what, why does grounding reduce inflammation in the body? Back then, the word inflammation didn't exist. We had uh, oxidative stress. But inflammation was you stubbed a toe or step, you know, broke an ankle or something. It would swell, balloon up, lots of pain, lots of heat, and so on. And um, and then then later, about one day, I remember I was, uh, I think it was Celier, uh, who I learned a lot from. And and then, but one day I went to <laughs> the newsstand, and here's this article. It says, you know, the front page shows a body on fire on Time magazine and it says, and it had the word inflammation. And then down below it said, you don't have all these modern health disorders. What you have is chronic inflammation. And I understood uh, what was going on, but they were talking about, it. but nobody knew how inflammation was being created. Was it lack of blueberries? That's what everybody thought for a while. Everybody was <laughs> stuffing themselves with blueberries. And <laughs> it, I mean, it was pretty nutty. And, um, but anyhow, so one day I was sitting there reading some research papers on the immune system and how the immune system works. And I started reading about the neutrophil, how if you have a pathogen in your body, somehow it senses the energy of that pathogen and it's built into that neutrophil and he'll swim over and he'll find this pathogen. And it's kind of like a, a jelly cell and it'll wrap itself around the pathogen. And then it will release what you call reactive oxygen species. Now, as soon as I read that, I said, it's electrical. The immune system is electrical. It's operating with charge. It's operating with radicals. Radicals are electrically highly charged electrical particles. They are so powerful. Uh, the, Reactive oxygen in a neutrophil is so powerful, it can rip an electron away from the shell of a pathogen. And that's how the immune system destroys them. Well, and, you know, we, we talk about radiation. I mean, what can you, what is there in nature that can rip an electron from anything? Nothing except the immune system. Uh, I mean, ionizing radiation, but that doesn't exist in nature except for the sun. And uh, so anyhow, I started down that path and then again, I'm a cowboy. I grew up on a ranch in Montana. You know, you spend half your time out in the pasture and if something's wrong, you gotta go fix it. <laughs> There's something wrong with the cows, you gotta go right to the pasture, find out what caused the cow to get sick. You know, you do all this stuff. And, um, and but anyhow, so, but it, you, know, you use your intuition a lot. <laughs> you have to depend on nature. You have to depend on the resources that are available. And so, I've always had that mindset. If something's wrong, something caused it. What caused it? Let's go fix what caused it and get rid of the problem because we, we can't keep the cattle healthy. Uh, otherwise, we don't make any money. And um, so anyhow, cowboy logic. If inflammation, according to Ritker, these people, is, you know, electron, I mean, um, chronic inflammation is the immune system is attacking the body. That's what they used to believe. You know, the word lupus, the wolf, you know, they didn't call it lupus because a wolf will chew off its leg if it's caused it, caught in a trap. And so they were saying lupus, you know, the body was eating itself, you know, and so on. That's how it all started in Germany many, many years back. But anyhow, so I said, okay, if we can reduce pain, you, you can't have, Pain, unless you have inflammation. Pain is a byproduct of inflammation. So if you have any pain in your body, you have inflammation in your body. Um, and so if we're going to reduce pain, and Stevenson, Dr. Stephen Sinatra was very helpful in helping me, helping me understand this. He was a cardiologist. And uh, he said, you know, if you're going to research pain, you got you got to look at this inflammation because you can't have pain unless you have the inflammation. Uh, and so I started looking at that. Then I realized that, Basically, when we're grounding somebody, what we're doing, because these are these reactive oxygen species, they're electrically charged. They're going to rip electrons away and they're going to create this 
uh, oxidative burst. And there's, it's, it's very, um, crude. This is part of the innate immune system that goes back to the beginning. And, and so it's very crude and it oxidizes, it burns things, it, you know, tears them apart or rips them apart with acid. Um, so I thought, okay, what's happening here, the reason these, the inflammation is manifesting is because when I ground somebody, what I'm doing is I'm like putting their hand on the, in the, on the dirt and their body, the skin is conductive. So it's absorbing electrons into the body and it goes into the bloodstream. And we actually done studies on this showing how within just a few minutes, it normalizes blood viscosity. The thickness of your blood automatically normalizes as soon as you put your hands and feet on the earth. And that's because these electrons are coming into the body and then the blood is circulating once a minute and all this, all these free electrons are now flowing through the body. And as after, you know, half a dozen circulation, then uh, it's pretty well distributed. So the first thing that happens is the blood thins because now they repel, the blood cells repel each other because they have neg more increased negative charges. They're like the earth itself. They're like a mini earth, miniature earth, an electrical charge on the surface and negative electrical charge on the surface. So now when they get close to each other, they repel each other like negative magnets. But if you don't have enough electrons, the little red blood cells will share electrons and stick together. And that's what's called Rouleau formations or thick and sticky blood, all that kind of stuff. That does not exist in the natural world. <laughs> thick and sticky blood does not exist in the need in nature. This is the zeta potential that you're describing, the idea that yes. you can measure the charge on the outside of a red blood cell. And yes. from your work, I learned about experiments that have been done with grounding where this measured zeta potential, and this is not pseudoscience, this is medical literature science, right? Yes. So it, isn't it true that studies have been done, I, maybe Stephen Sinatra did this study, where, where you can yes. take someone who is not grounded, that is wearing insulated shoes or not touching the earth for some amount of time, and I want to talk about how long we should ground for, but, and you can measure the zeta potential, this electrical charge on the outside of the red blood cells, most people know that the red blood cells carry oxygen in your blood. And then you can ground them and you can see the zeta potential, the electrical charge on the outside of a red blood cell change. That's pretty wild yes. to me. And this is what you're describing. So I just want to clarify it for listeners that this probably accounts for the change in the viscosity of the blood. We learn about this Rouleau formation in medical school. I believe it's spelled R-O-U-L-E-U-X. Um, and, and we learned about something called the erythrocyte sedimentation rate, the, the, yes. the avidity, the speed with which red blood cells will clump together. And this is a measure of inflammation. This is a measure of sort yes. of how, quote, inflamed the blood is. But it's interesting to me that in these dark field images, which is a special type of microscope, I guess, that you can use to look at red blood cells, you can see changes in the way that these red blood cells associate with, with each other when someone is grounded versus not. That's pretty mind-boggling to me. Did I describe that right? Am I thinking about that properly? Yeah, you're right on. That's, you know, that's what blew our mind. We said yeah, that should have been the discovery of the century <laughs> because <laughs> just simple standing on the earth normalizes blood viscosity. Well, half the population out there is on a blood thinner of some kind. 